right now we have 8 billion people in this world. Everybody has his own ideas and his own expectations maybe. How he sees himself and what he would like to do with himself during this lifetime. There's nothing more important in life than knowing who you are, the path that you're on and its final end. Right. Who are you? What path are you on and where are you going? It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers and today's video is from some of the best spiritual leaders in our field talking about spiritual awakening. Today's video sponsor is betterhelp.com where you can get professional therapy online linked down below in the description. Something I fully recommend that I have been doing once a week for over a year now. Before that, let's listen to some of the best spiritual lessons from some of the best spiritual teachers of our generation. Let's jump into the video. With our thoughts, we create the world. This is one of the quite powerful sentences in the, in the Buddhist teachings. So what does it mean? With our thoughts, we create the world. When you are able to impact your thoughts, when you are able to adjust your thoughts, you are able to adjust the world. This is what it means. So why do many Buddhist monks, why do many temples spend so much time meditating, sitting meditation? Because in the sitting meditation, one of the reasons is there is not much physical activity that you are able to witness on the outside. The body is, is still, the eyes are closed, normally it's quiet around, there's nothing to listen to, there is no smell, there's nothing to smell, and nobody's touching you, there's no feeling. So after sitting for quite some time, how do you still actually know that you have this body? Well, you don't. You just don't. But it's still out of question that you are still having some type of perception about yourself that you are like still existing, yes? But it is not body related. And if you take this type of teaching serious, this is one approach of how are you planning, how do you want to get to this area of becoming so fine that you are only finding yourself in the world of thoughts. Yeah. And why the thoughts? Because with the thoughts you would change this world in the way how you imagine this world should be. So ultimately what we talk about is yeah, how do you want this life to be? Pleasant. The beginning of my spiritual journey was, again, when I started as that angry atheist, materialist, reductionist, and then felt my body evaporate and had that moment of, oh shit, there's something else here. And I, I've studied religion and philosophy and tried to learn the best from all of these different schools of thought and lineages. But really, my own journey has been experiential. If I can't feel it, then it's not real to me. Like, I could listen to somebody talk about God for as long as they want. But until I've felt what God feels like in my whole body, I don't believe in God. So if somebody asks me, do you believe in God? No, I don't believe in God. I know God. I know it. You don't have, and I don't want you to believe me either. Like, go find out for yourself. You know, like, you don't take my word for anything. But you can go find it, and you can find a place where you know. You know. And nobody can take that from you, because it's not built on words. And it's not built on an idea. It's built on gnosis, which is the Greek word for the consumption and the entire enmeshment with that knowledge. Ayahuasca is one of the most powerful psychedelics in the world, and it combines the vine, which is actually ayahuasca, where ayahuasca gets its name, with the leaf, which is usually chacruna or opayaje or wambisa, a DMT-containing leaf. And the vine makes the DMT orally active in the body, because if you just eat a bunch of those leaves or make a tea out of them, 
you won't have any psychedelic effect. But combined with the vine, you have a very potent psychedelic effect that lasts for six hours. And it gives you access to undeniably another realm of consciousness. It feels like another dimensional reality and you have visions and you see things about your own life. You get encounters with beings or spaceships or whatever might convey the information that you need to heal and transform often comes through. And every journey is different. Sometimes you don't see any visions. Sometimes it's more physical and it's just the purge that comes out of your body, energy that you're releasing through vomit or through, you know, the other direction, or sometimes both at the same time. They call that affectionately double platinum when you're purging out of both ends at the same time, which I make fun of, but it happens to me frequently. Um, but it's, it's this interesting dance where you feel like you're in communication with the spirit of ayahuasca, which is really the spirit of the earth, of mother nature herself and she's the loving grandmother that's there to heal you and show you, you know, show you a way. Absolutely, ayahuasca is not for everybody. Just because it's my path and it's one of the ways that I was able to learn about myself, transform and grow, this is not a recommendation. I never want to be there saying, I recommend psychedelics to anyone in particular. I'm just talking about my experiences and my experiences were very profound and very important, but it's a personal calling. It's a very personal process. And it's, it is only one way. There are many ways. I think something that I can universally recommend is breath work and ecstatic dance. Those two things, I think, if you're actually able to go deep enough into both of those pathways, you can find massively transformative, transcendent experiences from both of those, you just have to take them to the level of depth that allows you to access, you know, the healing that you really need. Um, meditation is something that I think people love throwing it around. It's like everybody talks about meditation, but very few people actually really do it. And I was like one of those people. I was like, yeah, meditation. But how much was I meditating? Not much, a little bit here or there. It's difficult. It's more challenging process and I've learned the ways that really worked for me. Um, meditation in my life is less about transformation and more about allowing my body to really rest. The three states of mind, you have the conscious mind, the subconscious and the superconscious. The conscious mind is the external mind. It's it's tied to the world around us. It's tied to our five senses. When, when we talk, um, when we drive, when we interact with the outside world, we're functioning awareness that ball of light is functioning in the conscious mind. The subconscious mind, you could say, is like a hard drive. Uh, it's, it's a memory bank. It's a memory card. It stores every experience we've ever had in our life, whether we're conscious of it or not conscious of it. It's stored in our subconscious. Patterns are created there, uh, habit patterns. The superconscious is your deeply creative, spiritual, intuitive area of the mind. That's where intuition comes from. And, and, and again, one thing I should say is that, you know, everybody, every teacher, every speaker, educator may use words differently, right? So if you're studying with one person, it's important to get them to define the words to you. So I define focus one way, awareness one way, the mind one way, but you know, if, if you're studying philosophy with another person, they might define it differently. Not saying one is right, one is wrong, but it's just important to understand how that person is using the word so that you can put all the pieces together. So understanding the three states of mind are, is critical because at any given point in time, you can understand which area of the mind you're functioning in. Uh, not one is better than the other, they just serve, they just have different attributes. So if in your conscious mind, you're very externalized, if you're in your subconscious, you're thinking about your past. Oh, do you remember the time five years ago when we went on that holiday to Mallorca? How great was that? You know, you're functioning in the subconscious area of the mind. You're going to your memory bank. If you're doing something highly creative, creating music or art, or you have an intuitive flash insight into something, you, it's coming from the superconscious area of the mind. And, and that's why for me, it's always important to define first the goal. What is, what do you want in life, right? 
once you know what you want in life, then you know what tools you want, which area of the mind you need to function in, in order to get there. You know, people always say things like, oh, it's not the destination, it's all about the journey. You've heard that statement before. I'm like, what the hell? People who say that are people who don't know where the hell they're going. Somehow, when, when it comes to everyday life, people are logical and reasonable. But when it comes to spirituality, all logic and reason are thrown out the door. When you put your shoes on, you put your socks, your shoes, and then you tie your laces, three steps. I guess you don't mix those steps up. When you take a shower, you get in the bathroom, I'm assuming, you take your clothes off, you turn the water on, especially if you live in England where it's freezing cold, you want to make sure the water is the right temperature. When you get wet, you put soap on, you wash the soap off, you dry yourself, you put clothes on and you leave the bathroom. It's about eight or nine steps. Do you ever mix them up? Just because variety is the spice of life, why not? Let's just see what happens if I just mix it up today. You don't, you follow the process. The process gets you to the end goal, which is to feel clean. So why is it when it comes to spirituality, all reason goes out, ah, oh, you don't need a goal, you don't need a destination. There's no path, just be here and be now, be present. And my guru had a beautiful uh, saying to encapsulate this. He said, there's nothing more important in life than knowing who you are, the path that you're on and its final end. Right? Who are you? What path are you on and where are you going? And you know, I always say to people, you know, we have the most powerful tool in the world sitting in our heads. But yet, we have no manual for it. No one teaches us how to use it. People need a sense of purpose. And if people don't have a sense of purpose, they feel lost, they feel depressed, they feel unwanted, unneeded. They're not contributing. Kids feel the same way too. Right? When kids don't have a purpose or something greater need to do something, then they don't feel any importance. Then where do you channel all that energy? Energy is so powerful, right? And energy create has the ability to create things. So if you don't have a point of focus with energy to flow, then it's going to go all over the place. Just take water coming down from a mountain. You know, if it was spreading all over the mountain, that's one thing. But if you could channel all that water down a river or a stream, a river, you could harness that water, generate electricity, use that for, you know, irrigation, all kinds of things. Energy is the same way. When you have a central purpose, it's almost like you're channeling all that energy to one place. Then it's easier to manifest things, to create things that you want, as a result, people feel happier, more fulfilled. But when you don't have that, then it's just going all over the place. Sometimes it's invested in things and people that we don't like, that are not aligned with us, which results in experiences that are unpleasant. And it just creates complication. We all want a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, a sense of belonging to something. There's a great book that I absolutely love is uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. What a great book, you know, and one of the key themes he talks about in that book is uh, definiteness of purpose, being crystal clear of what it is you want. And that's the starting point. You know, law of attraction is something people love, right? Vision boards and doing all that kind of stuff. I'm going to attract it into my life. You know, the universe is going to get together to manifest this for me. Really? You know? But again, no clarity in what it is you want to manifest. What What is it you want? I want a man in my life. Okay. What type of man? One who beats you, one who loves you, one who cooks for you, you know, one who will have wonderful conversations with you. You have to get specific, right? Because even before you can start to manifest anything, if you don't have clarity around what it is you want to manifest, you can't. So even when I work with with athletes or business people, you know, with an athlete, it's like, what specifically do you want to achieve? You know, do you want the golden boot? Do you want the Champions League? You know, do you want the Wimbledon trophy? 
what is it you want? Once you have that clarity, then you know where to channel all your energy. You know what to visualize in your head. What to st what you you can start to do the processes that need it, that need to be done in order to create that. Everything manifests in the mental plane first before it manifests in the physical plane. You think about it. You have an idea. You have a podcast. It started with an idea in your head. Right now, we have eight billion people in this world. Everybody has his own ideas and his own expectations, maybe how he sees himself and what he would like to do with himself during this lifetime. So that means we have eight million, eight billion different ideas. And one misconception maybe, or just something to meditate about, to contempl uh, contemplate about is, why would this world, why would this life, or even this universe, uh, now I express it a little bit in a negative way maybe, but why should this life care about an individual's expectation about life? And now we are not just having one, we're having eight billion individual expectations about life. But for me in my mind, it's just like, we are talking right now about the creator of everything. The creator of the universe, the creator of the planets, of the humans, of the animals, of the plants, of all possibilities in this world. We are talking about this type of force. In comparison to the expectation of an individual human. I'm not sure who is in the more powerful position at the moment. I mean, I am sure. <laughs> the thing is just, I don't think that this type of force is existing in this world in order to fulfill that individual person's expectation about life. I think it's the other way around. I think that you have been put here on, the, on this world as a small individual in order now to be open. In order to be open, in order to receive what that force has to offer you in this lifetime. Which means you are walking through this lifetime without an own idea, more or less, what to do with your life. You are open to receive yeah, what this life, in a way, has to offer you. I strongly think that every human being, first of all, has a great, 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 great possibility to take something in your own hands and base decisions that you are taking for your lifetime based on your own ideas. So you have something in your hands. This is the one part. At the same time, I also think there is something you don't have in your hands at all. It's not in your hands. It's out of question. Like what, for example? The fact that right now, that my nose in that sense, or your nose, it is the nose that our grandfather 10 generations before also already had. So now the question is, how much influence do you, how much influence do I have in deciding what nose is now here on my face? I think none. So that means there is some information that has been given to you, that has been given to me, that we were born with. You can't change it. That is the one part. Now if I bring this thought a little bit more far, what does it mean? It means I think some people are born with the character, let's say, of a sheep. 
them, which doesn't mean a sheep is a bad animal. It just means a sheep is a sheep. And other people, other humans, maybe are born with a character which is a little bit more similar to one of a tiger. This is not about now which is like now better. It's not about better. It's about to understand where is your nature coming from. What is your natural, uh, what is your natural aspiration? Why? Because somebody who like lives together always in the community, like a sheep. He doesn't want to become the CEO of a of a company and be the the lonely wolf. He is happy to just have some time with the community friends, with his surroundings, and he doesn't he's not inter interested in dominating other people. Yeah, but at the same time, if you put like just a few tigers together in the room, yeah, then the natural thing also happens. And some people are made to build something up. Meaning they are made to lead, they are made to guide, they have the potential inside of them to bring it out and other ones they are happy with the way how things are when the rules are set they just follow the rules and they are fine with it. And this is where I see a little bit that importantly that it's not about good or bad but it is about listening to yourself what is it that you really want on the one side and also what you're capable of and therefore not everybody wants to manifest not everybody has the skills to manifest and this is also something very funnily why in the Shaolin temple for example we say from a thousand students that come, ultimately maybe one or two from a thousand are ultimately really staying in these type of practices. It is also important right now to have something in your life where you really feel this is something that regenerates me. This gives me regeneration. It's not important how many hours we are lying horizontally in the bed. The important part is how many minutes or hours of this lying part are you regenerating. So it is about investing. What makes my body regenerate better? for example, in the night. And there comes simple things, which is like, don't eat too much right before you go to bed. Because that simply means that your digestive system is going to be active. But regeneration means that your energy creation, that the, that the amount of energy that you are replenishing that this is higher than your energy output, then this is called regeneration. But if, let's say, you are putting your phone onto the charger, but at the same time you're still having all the apps on, it can still happen that even though it was on the charger, but it's still not charging because your output is still too high. So, and this is a very simple way of how we are regarding also the facts about ourselves when we talk about what is this with the energy the Shaolin talk about. It's just this simple understanding in the beginning to balance things out. If you want to train hard at the same time it means you must be able to find a way, regenerate more quickly, watch your diet, what are you eating, what are you drinking, how much are you sleeping, how much, how vital do you feel. And the more vital you feel, the higher those areas can become where you are 
actively creating something and to create something I think yes this is something this is maybe what all humans somehow would like to do to create a life everyone personally really enjoys to live but in order to do this you cannot do it without proper methods you cannot do it without proper preparation and you also cannot do it without the proper character traits that can support you very very much when it comes to such an uh, such an approach which lesson stands out to you the most comment it down below share some of your own guidance and wisdom uh, for me one of the biggest lessons this year has been about self-awareness and reaching self-awareness so many of us go through life without actually looking introspectively and we're just experiencing life as it happens which is such a wonderful thing sometimes but we forget to look inside and think about sort of the output that we have the uh, the energy that we give out to other people um, so yeah, an introspection and a self-awareness is kind of the biggest thing that I think people should be seeking if you haven't done that already. Uh, today's sponsor of the video was betterhelp.com. If you follow the link in the description, you can get online therapy from professionals um, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whenever you want. And it, I've done this once a week this last year, so I wholeheartedly recommend it. It is also sponsored by mulliganbrothers.com where you can buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and the journals and so much more which helps support us fly around the world and interview these amazing spiritual leaders and these people uh, who we just have the privilege to be able to share with you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like and subscribe. Go follow me on Instagram at Jordan Mulligan Brother. Go check out all the res resources as well in the, in the links down below. But, um, Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed and productive day and go inspire some change. Peace.